So welcome back everybody. I have expressed my desire before on the channel to build a pole barn to house my sawmill and uh, any lumber and tractor and stuff like that. And my desire to build a barn or a pole barn or similar structure is really not gone. But what I need right now is something quick and easy and inexpensive to house my sawmill in. Now my sawmill, of course, you know, that's a fairly large investment and it's been sitting out in the weather for a long time. And I'm just, I'm really tired of seeing it sitting out in the rain. And as we know, sheds are pretty inexpensive structures and they're easy to build so that's what we're going to do so as of the taping of this uh, this video I'm actually I've actually already started on the bar, on the shed I've got the four corner posts placed so let's go back in time for a bit and see exactly what has to be done uh, in order to be able to complete this shed so here are the basic plans for it as you can see it's just a standard 30 by 12 uh, shed and this area right here is going to be able to house the tractor and we're going to house the sawmill right here now there's really not a lot of challenges as far as building sheds go because they're very simple but the main challenge for a sawmill shed is this right here you've got a clear span of 20 feet and you have to have something up here that's going to be able to support the weight of the roof and not sag over time so I set out to find a tree that would be suitable for such a task now I like to cut down trees that are congregated very close together this little group of trees right here would have fit the bill and one tree especially this one right here actually would have been just right but the problem was uh, I did not think that I could cut it down without it getting hung up in the canopy. So I continued to look and I found this one and this tree was a really good candidate but it was not particularly accessible. So I kept looking and I ended up finding this tree. Now this tree was in a reasonably accessible place and it seemed to be pretty close to the right width plus to the left of it was a pretty healthy white oak tree and once we cut this tree down it'll allow that white oak to grow up some. I ended up cutting this log into a 22 foot section just to give myself some wiggle room and one of my biggest concerns was that the tractor was not going to be able to pull this log. Fortunately once I got the tongs adjusted to the right place on the boom it really it strained a little bit but it, uh, it was able to carry the log out of the woods thankfully.
So that brings us to where we are right now. Uh, we need to get a 14 inch timber out of this thing. I want a 14 by five and I'm not so, so sure we're gonna get it. You know, the, tree, the, the logs or the trees, they always look bigger on the stump, I guess. And that proved to be the case with this one, even though, you know, I did the math and tried to figure it pretty close. Uh, this one ended up being kind of kind of smaller than I was hoping. But if we get a 13 inch timber, that'll probably be okay. Or even if it's 12 and a half, I think we can deal with it. We can put braces in the corners and I may do that anyway, but let's get a little closer, a little bit of a closer look and I will show y'all how I'm gonna try my best to get a 14 out of this. So if we look at the small end of the tree here or the log, we can see that we have got about 12 inches in that direction. If you, if you went to the middle of this piece right here, we would, we would see that it's 12. Uh, and we've got 14 in this direction, actually just a hair less than 14. So as you can see, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to get, a, get 14 out of it. This log is 22 feet long, and I didn't really consider the overhang on the sides of the, of the shed when I, when I did this, or the one side that this will be hanging off on. So I'm gonna to try to use the entire length of this log. I thought I only needed about 20 or 21 feet, but it looks like we're gonna to have to use the entire length of it. So you can see where I've got it positioned now. I've got, I guess you could call a little manual tow board here or uh, shim up under that edge. But I think what I'm gonna do is turn it a little bit more to see if I can get one flat edge on the very bottom. And we'll see what that does with that end. We want to, we want to make sure we preserve that 14 inch that 14 inch length down that we're width down there. So now we've got it to where the straight side is on the bottom so we can work off one straight side now and also at the very end of the uh, of the log the small end we were just looking at that uh, 14 inch is is uh, laying horizontal so i think we can preserve it i just i just hope the rest of the log will cooperate there's nothing left to do but give it a try i've never done this before so uh we'll just see what happens
So uh, before we keep going, I'm sure a lot of you, sure a lot of y'all are probably wondering why the LT10 is sitting back there. Well, I mentioned on the channel that I sold it about a year ago, and that's true. I sold it to a local guy who has a farm uh, pretty close to here, and he uh, it's not an emergency to him to come get it, and it's not in my way, so it's just kind of been sitting there ever since. So it is sold. Uh, it's technically not mine, but it's still here, and it's you know it's really no hurry. But anyway. I just wanted to mention that because I know I'm going to get some questions about that. So we've got two sides of this thing squared off and what we need to do now is, you know, I basically got two chances to get a 5 by 14 and, you know, if I cut it on two sides and don't get my 14, there's a possibility I can cut it on the other two sides and get my 14. Well now we're working on the side that has the two horns basically and you saw me put that little spacer or shim up under that side and that was just to kind of get, uh, get the thing even. So I, I don't think I'm going to get a 14 out of this, unfortunately, because right here it's actually 14 and I haven't cut it yet. So uh, maybe maybe 13 is a little more realistic. Let's um, let's just cut it and see what we get. All right, guys. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to explain this, and uh, y'all are probably like, "Shut up and just saw." So here's what I want to do. Right here, this is a 13 by 13, which is pretty good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our long. It actually needs to be about 22 feet, which we've got. I'm gonna get my long timber out of this piece right here, right? So this piece is gonna be our 13. Gonna be 13 by five. So 13 by 5 is going to come out of right here. I need a shorter piece, which is going to be, it's going to need to be something like 10 feet. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, probably 11 or 12 feet, actually. We're going to get that out of this side. Now, the reason for that is I, I pulled a, a heart splinter when I cut down this tree. I pulled a heart splinter, which made this weak on the end. So we don't want to use this portion, you know, no more than we have to. So what I'm going to do is we're going to flip this thing two times or three times. I can't remember which. We're going to flip it so that this is up. So it's going to be one, two, three. We had to flip it three times. And then we're going to make a cut and then we're going to take the chainsaw and cut that timber off and that'll give us the 10, 11, 12 foot whatever timber that we need. Then we can continue on uh, then we can continue on dealing with uh, with this portion because we're going to have to move the log up and down the mill to make to get this part out.
right guys so we're gonna have to flip this back over unfortunately and sh uh, shave about an inch off of this if you see right here that's the that's the curve from the chainsaw when I took the slab off of the top which this used to be the top and it went in unfortunately about an inch and we're gonna have to turn and shave that off so that we can remove that right there because that's just that's a useless spot right there and it's gonna create a weak spot in the timber so let's flip it over and shave an inch off So I've decided that just taking the blade off while it's still stuck in the log is about the easiest thing to do here instead of trying to fiddle with the chainsaw and, and all that stuff. We can do this and then push the head back and it's a lot, a lot less fiddly than doing other stuff. Guys, this is the last part right here. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, all we got to do is get this last little part squared off, and I'll show you how I plan to do that. So I ran out of storage space on my SD card before we got that last um, last procedure done. But you kind of get the picture here. You can see that it's just uh, 
you know, this thing is just up on these, these chalk blocks or shims or whatever you want to call them. And I got this idea and I was going to put like two by fours or something like that up under this thing. And then I went over to Bus Huxley's channel because I remember he tried to do this. Well, he did do the same thing one time. And I was going to go check out his method. He was sawing uh, boards, so it was a little bit different, I think. But uh, one somebody in the comment section actually, I think he had a Norwood 36 or something, said, uh, hey, you can put four by four up under there and just move the thing up and down and that'll work too so I'm gonna try to find who said that and give them some credit because whoever it was I think has saved the day here and if I ever do this if I ever finish this one I'm never gonna do this again I hope but you can see I've got just a wedge up under here because you know you've got a little bit of weight with this pulling the weight of this pulling this thing down we don't want to make a curved timber really all I've got to do now is saw this flip it flip it flip it and that should do it. I, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think, I think we're going to make it, guys. So let's go ahead and get this sawed up and, uh, whew, and, and keep going here. just fine.
goodness, that was bad. So guys, that's all I've got for this video. Um, surely there is a, is a better way to do that. I just don't know what it is, but we got it. We got a five by 13 by 22 feet long, and I'm not gonna give you a real close up of it now. You're gonna see it hopefully in next week's video uh, as a part of the sawmill shed. So we won't go over it too close right now, um, but yeah, that was, that was difficult. That took about seven hours, give or take. And um, as far as working on it yesterday and today, that was very labor intensive and some of it was probably dangerous. But we got it done and nobody got hurt and uh, that's what counts. But I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It's not quite as wide as I would have liked it, but I don't think it's gonna make much difference. Turns out we're only gonna have to uh, span a 19 foot span. And uh, so I think it'll be fine. But anyhow, that's all I've got. Hit the like button before you get out of here, and I will see you all in the next one.